Hello and welcome to another episode of The Naked Turner. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I wanted to share with you a little something. I got this piece of burl in the mail the other day. I just wet it down a little bit and put some uh, hydrogen peroxide on it. Um, I didn't have what I was suggested to use, which was some clove oil. I thought I might use some tea tree oil because I know it's also antifungal and antimicrobial. Um, because this was sent to me from Australia by a gentleman by the name of Leslie or Les and uh, he's been sending me some stuff so I thought I might give a try at turning this into something so I did wet it down with some uh, hydrogen peroxide and uh, in hopes of killing off any of the uh, little microbes or things that might be on here I also was going to use what he had suggested, which I'm going to try to get a hold of some real soon here at my local grocery store. That's some clove oil. Apparently if you take and put a little, some clove oil in some water and spray it on this, that also would get rid of the problem. But uh, what I happen to have was some hydrogen peroxide here. So I put some of that on it, kind of let it soak in a little bit, and uh, it may bleach it out a hair, but what I did was rinse it right afterward to get rid of uh, any of the additional amounts of hydrogen peroxide. Um, Les, thank you very much. This looks like a pretty, uh, this may be kind of a challenge to turn this, but I'll see what I can turn it into. Um, it is a beautiful, beautifully figured piece of burl. This is gray gum wood burl from Australia. So I'm going to see if I can do something with it. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoy this video. Okay, so I have this mounted up on my face plate here. And uh, I'm deciding there's some polyurethane glue that Les had used to kind of stabilize this in some places. And there's still a little bit of funk on this. So I'm going to spray it with some denatured alcohol as well. Right now, just kind of give it a good coating. And I can see some of the different little mold fungus maybe stuff that might be on it. And when you start this up, you don't want too much of that alcohol flying off. Okay, now, for the interest of camera, I'm going to torch this and you'll see what's happening here. I'm burning that denatured alcohol off, okay? And that's going to do a couple different things for me, too. That's going to kill any of those spores and uh, it's also going to dry any of that fluid off of there very quickly. And at a nice slow speed, you can hear it still burning off a little bit and it's almost out there we go it's completely out now and it's dried itself off it's burned off all of the alcohol as well as any other little funny mold spores that might be on there so that's how I'm going to handle the uh, situation I had, potential situation I had here with uh, mold spores and things like that all right we'll get rid of all this and that's a good way to handle that. Um, I learned that technique of lighting the uh, denatured alcohol. I had oftentimes used denatured alcohol, but I learned that technique one day watching a Jimmy Clues video where he raised the grain on some maple uh, using alcohol, which I was already doing, but never had tried putting a torch to it, and it struck me as what a brilliant idea. So now every once in a while, when I'm turning and there's something sort of like this, I didn't think of this until I was right in the process of doing it, that, hey, uh, it would be a good idea to torch that right now to get rid of any of the other little microbes that might be on there. All right, thanks, and uh, let's get to turning. All right, always remember your safety gear. I have my face shield on. There still could be all kinds of little pieces of stuff that could fly out of this, so remember to wear your safety gear. Turn down nice and slow to start out with, and 
going to bring it up slowly. I'm up around 540. I'm up at about 720. I can still feel a little bit of the denatured alcohol coming out of the inside of this. So another good reason to have your face shield on. Okay, there I get a little bit of wobble at about 870. 875. I'm going to go to 875 and start turning. Okay. There we go. I'm using my half inch bowl gouge to flatten out the bottom of this piece so that I have a nice flat surface to mount my chuck to as well as removing any of the loose material off the bottom. Okay, now I'm mounting up my scrolling jaw chuck, pulling off my face plate, and mounting this burl in the opposite direction. There is an interesting thing here. There's a bandsaw cut in this that was um, that Les was trying to glue up. It comes in somewhere in here. I'm not sure exactly how deep it goes. So I think what I might try to do is get part of a regular edge maybe here, which will expose some of the beauty of their out, the outer ring of this burl, and I'll maybe leave that a little thick and then hollow out a bowl, because otherwise I'm worried that this piece here will never really look that good, the part that has a bandsaw cut running through it. So I'm going to see what I can come up with. And I'll get started here by doing just a little bit of hollowing to see what happens. I edited a bunch of this out because I was having to remove so much material in order to get rid of the bandsaw cut. Alright, so you can see this bandsaw cut running through here. And it goes back in pretty deep here, so what I'm going to try doing now is I have to go a little further to get rid of it up at this edge, and then I might try to blend the back edge into it a little bit and just see what I can get out of this. I really wanted to leave some natural edge on this, but um, I think I'm going to have to remove most of the natural edge, and then there will just be some of these uh, exclusions here of bark and some inclusions of other stuff here. So. Uh, I'm going to keep shaking here for a minute. Safety shield. There's all kinds of stuff flying off. Okay, now. I'm continuing to remove material, chasing this bandsaw cut through the burl. Alright, so I think you can see this here. There's still some of this bandsaw cut running through here, which is really you know, it's very evident. It's not something I could fill and easily have go away and look good. So now what I'm going to start trying to do is spin my tool rest around up here and work on the back side. Trying to stand out of the way, too.
Okay, more material removing, and I don't have a great camera angle here, but uh, I'll be changing my camera angle here in a minute, so you'll get a better view. Okay, so I have this back side of this vessel uh, sanded down to 320 right now, and normally I would be using a cloth rag but because this has so many small holes and stuff that could grab cloth uh, I am switching over to a cotton rag and I'm spinning down fairly slow right now I'm going to turn it down around 700 rpm I'm going to come in here face shield down and apply some sanding sealer I'm applying some of this shellac and denatured alcohol based uh, sanding sealer to this little piece and I'm getting it ready to turn around or getting it ready for the final hollowing and as you can see here it's starting to look pretty good so uh, a little more buffing and picking out of debris and we're ready to start hollowing the inside as you can see <clears throat> this portion right here uh, could potentially be pretty weak and I don't want to lose it all so I may end up leaving it fairly thick around this outer edge and then just hollowing it out in the middle if I can. Um, we'll see what happens. I'm going to give it a try and move these lights a little bit just because. Watch here as uh, I lose a chunk of this bowl. I'm just going to do some step sanding here, sand through some grits, and uh, then put a little bit of uh, sanding sealer on and put some finish on. Using some air to blow it out, and then the sanding sealer goes on. Alright, so I'm just about finished here. pretty stunning and uh, Leslie from Australia thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to uh, steward this piece of gum wood burl into this little tiny vessel here uh, it is very sweet the grain in this is incredible rich and uh, lots of really pretty figuring in it I'm going to try my best now to flip it around with a pressure pad inside of here um, and see if I can part off that tenon off the bottom. So, I have a small piece of this type of padding inside of my bowl. I have a chunk of pressure block inside my scrolling jaw chuck with this foam on the end of it pushing on the bottom of my bowl and then I have my tailstock live center brought into the middle of the bolt. So now I'm running in reverse. Let's go to forward gear. I've got it nicely centered up. It's running real truly. I'm going to bring my cool rest down a little bit and bring up my speed sump to 2200 RPM. Okay, now I'm going to try to round Good. And now 
just need to start whittling away at that. I'm just sanding the bottom, prepping it for finish and getting ready to slice this piece off of the lathe and then it'll be done. Finished gray gum burl wood bowl. And this piece, uh, just so you get an idea of scale, this piece is four and three eighths by one and three quarters. So it's uh, four and three eighths across the diameter by one and three quarters deep. And uh, anyway, I think it turned out really nice. I was hoping for something a little different, but uh, this is what the wood allowed me to come up with, and I, um, I'm glad that it did. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click like, give me a thumbs up, and uh, if you're a subscriber, thank you for your continued support. If you're not a subscriber, please take the time to do so.